A woman ate 23 bananas after fasting seven days. This is what happened to her organs. KC is a 23-year-old woman presenting to the emergency room unconscious. Her mother Jane tells the admitting nurse that KC had been acting funny over the last week, but no one was really sure what had been happening. KC was a fitness enthusiast. When she started college, she got into intermittent fasting to help regulate her diet. This is a time when people set specific times where they can and cannot eat to help maintain order in their diet. She noticed that sometimes she could go a few days without eating, and without making up for it, she'd lose a good amount of weight. She noticed that on the day she started eating, she'd have a massive headache after the first meal, but she didn't think anything of it. Over the course of the pandemic, Casey had felt that she had become less fit. She took it into her own hands to tighten the fasting periods of her eating. She saw a group of people talking about how fasting for days at a time was a way to not only help limit intake, but to also suppress what someone called hunger hormones. In her interpretation, eating more would just cause the body to release more hunger hormones, making her hungrier after every meal, causing her to eat even more. She believed this is what had happened to her in the years since the pandemic. So by slowly increasing the number of days where she wouldn't eat at all, she would be gradually pushing down levels of hunger hormones and prime her body to get back into shape, she thought. She started by not eating for a day and then leaving an eight hour window the next day where she was allowed to eat. The next week she'd try for two days in a row without eating and then three days the next. She did lose weight, but noticed that her workouts were sluggish and the more days in between where she didn't eat, the more that she wouldn't feel well when she did start eating. KC had read online about refeeding syndrome that can happen when someone comes out of a fasted state too quickly. If someone fasts for too long, then their body would adapt to that state, so eating a lot suddenly can throw everything off balance. She thought she understood it and knew that taken to the extreme, eating too quickly after fasting for too long could be life-threatening, but she would never take it to the extreme, of course. It didn't really matter to her. She didn't have any syndrome. She was okay, but just didn't feel great. As the weeks passed, KC lengthened her fasts. It wasn't intermittent fasting because she would go for almost a week in a row without eating. She noticed that she stopped getting her period. Her biggest concern was that if she broke her fasting schedule and started eating like she had before, then all of her work towards being the shape that she was now would be all for nothing. She knew she eventually had to eat and she was okay with that, so nothing seemed to be the problem. But one day, after fasting an entire week, Casey knew it was time to eat. She had never fasted that long. She prepared beef soup, which she read about online to help start refeeding and had done it several times with success, but it wasn't enough. Over the next few hours, Casey developed her normal headache. She drank some water for it and started eating some meat, and then her stomach started to swell. She went to bed feeling cold and shaking. Over the next couple days, Casey thought she was being cautious about refeeding. She kept it up, but her headache wouldn't go away. She would feel like her stomach was swollen, but she just let it go. Casey felt her heart beating in her head. After a while, she thought she was in the clear, and any risk of refeeding was over as she started eating. She was hungry, and she started eating some fruit, and she wouldn't stop eating until she realized she ate 10 pounds worth of bananas and left the peels all over the kitchen counter. Minutes after her breakfast, KC became thirsty and started drinking as much water as she could. She felt bloated and inflated and thought that the water would help stop her headaches. She could feel her heart skipping as her headaches started piercing into her skull. She felt her stomach swell up while parts of her legs started twitching as the last thing that she could remember. Her mother Jane finds KC on the floor wheezing and sweating without knowing how long her daughter was like this. 911 is called. Paramedics find that Casey drifts in and out of consciousness as she's brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, doctors noticed that Casey's body mass index was a little low. Her actual body weight was lower than her ideal body weight, which is a calculated and standardized clinical measure based on height and is used for things like dosing medicines. In this case, doctors weren't exactly sure what was happening, but what they were sure of was that she seemed confused and would drift in and out of consciousness. A quick test finds that KC has hypoglycemia. Hypo meaning low, glyce from Greek meaning sweet and referring to glucose, a name for sugar used as energy in the human body, and emia meaning presence in blood. Low sugar presence in blood. Hypoglycemia can explain why KC has altered mental status as doctors start her on a glucose IV, but something's wrong. 
If KC had eaten almost 30 bananas before presenting to the emergency room, and bananas are well known to have a lot of sugar, then how could she have low sugar presence in blood? A blood test finds that she has vitamin deficiencies. Doctors and her parents still don't know that she ate 10 pounds of bananas after fasting for a week because she couldn't tell them as she drifts in and out of consciousness. In her hospital bed, the nurse begins to administer the vitamins to KC. As doctors continue her IVs, they find that she's also dehydrated for some reason. But very quickly, KC starts to become agitated. Her muscles start twitching and her kidneys stop making urine and then her blood pressure started dropping. Her heart rate would change from slow to fast and back, while parts of her heart would skip beats. And another blood test gives everyone some more clues as to what could be happening. Doctors find that KC now has hyperglycemia, high sugar presence in blood. This could make sense because they've been giving her sugar in her IV, but the test also shows that she has hypokalemia low potassium presence in blood. But why would potassium be low in her blood? She ate a lot of bananas and those have potassium. Casey's kidneys don't produce any more urine so the potassium couldn't have been urinated out. She hasn't had a bowel movement in the one day that she's been in the hospital so she didn't lose any there either. You can't breathe potassium out, meaning that that potassium must have exited her blood and entered somewhere else inside of Casey's body. And if most of the body's potassium is already inside the cells, then it means something must have caused even more potassium from the blood to get shoved into the cells. And this happened during the time that she was in the hospital because when she presented to the emergency room, her blood potassium level and other electrolytes were mostly normal. So how could this happen? The medical team takes a closer look at the blood test and finds that it's not just potassium that's low in Casey's blood. She also has hypocalcemia, low calcium presence in blood, hypomagnesemia, low magnesium presence in blood, and hypophosphatemia, low phosphate presence in blood. And if there's been more things going into her body rather than coming out of her body during the time that she's been in the hospital, then why would all of these have low presence in blood? You see, in a fasted state, the body becomes sensitive to insulin, which is a hormone that's released after you eat a meal, and the amounts of insulin released can vary depending on the kind of food that you eat. Carbohydrates tend to spike insulin levels while proteins and fats get a response too. This brings us to the idea of cell signaling. Hormones are the body's way of sending signals inside. In the case of insulin, it's a signal to tell the cells that new nutrients are here, time to absorb them in and use their resource. When the body doesn't get a lot of new nutrients in very often, like when you're fasting, the cells want to be more alert for the signal when there are new nutrients available, so they become more sensitive to insulin. In KC's case, she knew to start eating slowly when breaking her fast, to eat a little and then build up more over time. But when she finally let up and ate several pounds of bananas when she thought she was in the clear, the sugar rush from the fruit signaled to her cells to shove the nutrients floating around in her blood into her cells. Potassium gets pulled out from the blood and shoved into her cells, explaining her hypokalemia. Potassium is needed by the muscles to signal a relax, and if there isn't enough floating around in the blood to provide that signal, then the muscles can't relax, explaining her twitching. Proteins from the muscles break off into the bloodstream and gunk up in her kidneys, shutting them down. Low magnesium prevents the kidneys from reabsorbing potassium, making her hypokalemia worse but that's not the only thing that happened here. Even though she has low phosphate presence in blood, her body's stores of phosphate may have been depleted because she kept repeating her fasts, and her actual body weight was less than 70% of her ideal body weight. So as a clinical measure, this could indicate a degree of malnutrition. The reason why phosphate is a problem here is because the body uses ATP for energy, adenosine triphosphate. Phosphate was depleted over time because of Casey's fasts, but also the sensitivity of her body to insulin caused whatever phosphate was left floating around in her blood to pack into all of her cells, regardless if they needed it or not. Some cells need it more than others, and they get extras from the blood, but when suddenly there just isn't enough available in the blood, then problems start to happen. And if vitamins are needed to properly use ATP for energy, then this brings us to Casey's next problem. Do you remember her vitamin deficiency and doctors started her on an IV of vitamins? 
Well, being chronically deficient in B vitamins can cause mental status changes, just like low blood sugar does. And unfortunately, starting her on an IV of glucose was absolutely the wrong thing to do in KC, given that sugar spikes insulin levels, and KC's body was very sensitive to insulin. The 10 pounds of bananas she ate did her in, and because she couldn't tell anyone and her blood levels when she presented to the emergency room hadn't caught up to what was happening, things just kept getting worse for KC. Fasting is popular now in fitness and diet circles, and there's a lot more talk about refeeding syndrome now than in 2005. But the reason why doctors may not think of it right away is because it historically didn't happen all that often here in the United States. If it does happen, it's not always immediately obvious. Refeeding syndrome you might see in people who can't eat or don't eat for some reason. Those people might have a tumor in their mouth or their neck, or they have a severe mouth sore, or they have stomach disease and they don't eat for several days. Then they become critically ill for some reason, maybe or maybe not related to the fact that they haven't been eating for a couple of days. In the hospital, these people get sedated and a tube is stuck down their throat so that a machine can breathe for them. You can't eat when you have a tube like that in your mouth, so the medical team feeds you intravenously. If they don't know that you haven't eaten for five days because it might not be that obvious, sugar and amino acids and fats are sent intravenously, causing an insulin increase, causing everything to get shoved into the cells in the setting of insulin sensitivity and causing organs to shut down because there aren't enough nutrients in the blood for them to use. If electrolytes in KC are low, then the answer is to replace them with care and constant monitoring as to not go overboard and cause high electrolyte presence in blood, which can be just as deadly as the opposite. This could have been avoided if KC started refeeding slowly and not eaten 10 pounds of bananas so quickly after breaking her fast, or just not fasted in such an extreme manner. For weight loss, fasting can be a great tool, but with every great tool always comes a safety precaution. With careful monitoring and support of family and friends with her afterwards, KC was able to make a full recovery. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.